Venomous Smoke Podcast. And I'm back. This is your boy Mo Young from the Venom and Smoke Podcast. Thank y'all for tuning in. I have a very special guest. <laughs> I have a very special guest that's in in today in the world of wrestling. And it comes. Oh, sorry. my that's my uh my computer was going off. I'm sorry. Uh, let me try this again. I know I'm live, but we got a very special guest here to do this interview with me. It's a professional wrestler named uh, Rootless Lala, and she's a very, uh, like a very good wrestler, man. Let me get her in on here right now. How you doing, Lala? I'm trying to get my hair together. My computer was tripping. I'm sorry. Crazy shit. There you go. Just thank you. I'm glad I could be here. I have uh, that same hat. I have that same hat. Yeah. I'm like, I think I'm <laughs> I got that. My stepson has it now, but I have that same hat. Like I'm going through some things so right I'm now, going, so you know, man, I'm 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 trying to hang in there, yo. Uh, it's 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 been really rough. Um, but then we'll just like like right when you call like, like right when I called you. Hey, I had like already like left the hospital and uh and heading home and I'm like, oh shit, I forgot I had an interview. <laughs> I'm like, glad yeah. you you remember me. <laughs> so Man, I, I had to remember yo. I had to remember yo. Hey yo, I can't I can't forget about you. So, you know, um, I'm here. It. I'm here, we're good. You know you're my favorite woman's wrestler, you know how to get you on the show. Close line and people hear it off. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I haven't seen the tape. Now maybe pull up That's, the tape. I seen the pull, tape. Pull up the tape. Pull up the tape. Let's see it. I want to see it. Pull up the tape. <laughs> roll that roll. footage. Where the tape is. <laughs> oh, I will. Oh, you know I will. But uh <laughs> man, I got a question. So what got you in what made you get into wrestling? What uh, made you pick I, all the things in the world? You pick wrestling. Man, so my mom, my mother. She wanted me to be a doctor. Uh, and uh, one, I'm a preacher's kid. So, you know, uh, I didn't wear my first pair of pants until I was like about, you know, uh, I don't wear my first pair of pants until I was like about 18. So, um, my mom used to be asleep. And I would like legitimately go and uh, turn the TV, you know, like them big old TVs that they used to have. So we're like, oh, like, yeah, like if, it, if a knob the broke, you have the pliers on it, and you got like, oh, yeah. to turn it on to where to make like like your parents will hear a little. So um, I was watching TV while my mom was um sleep, and like legitimately, I was like, I got like totally into it. I was watching uh, it's when it was WWF. So like I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, this is dope. I was like, what is this? You know, and I was like, why have I never seen this before? And sure enough, like after that, I used to sneak and watch it. I got into it. And um, the older I got, the more I kept getting into wrestling. And um, I ended up being in high school. And uh, right when I was in high school, um, I ended up meeting a friend of mine who was going to wrestling shows and, uh, you know, her and her mom would do the concession. 
And so I was like, oh, snap, I want to go. Like, I, this is something that I want to do. You got to let me in. I want to go. I want to watch this. I want to watch this. And um, I went, and, yo, it blew my mind. Like, to see it live, it blew my mind. And after that, yeah. I was like, yo, I've ha- I got to be a part of this. I got to be a part of this. And so I started, um, I started as a security and uh, then a runner, which a runner is the person that runs and gets, like, drinks and food for the wrestlers, you know, because the wrestlers can't do it. What made you get into wrestling? Um, I love how you can – I don't, I don't mean this in a bad way, but I love how you can manipulate emotions. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I've been in a lot of places to where I've wrestled, and people don't know me. People have never seen me a day before in their life. But when I walk through that curtain, they're just like, I get in the ring. Now, now, now here's the thing, though. Like, you know, it's not all good stuff, you know, because you have people who look at me and be like, oh, she's fat. And, you know, like, like, like why she ain't naked? And, you know, and, like, you know, show her ass. Is, you know, so, like, it, it, those are things that I deal with, but I don't even pay attention to it. So, it's like... Exactly. Right, you know, so it's like to be able to come out and to perform in front of people who've never met you before a day in their life and they're on the edge of their seat saying, like, if you get hurt, they're, like, crying. And if you're, like, if you're on top, they're, like, yeah, you know, so, like, to, to, to be able to manipulate people's feelings and to make them feel good to where they don't feel bad for spending how much money they have spent, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like they don't get all the way in. So, like, my, my thing is is to make sure – that the fans get their money's worth. And to see kids and grown people who I've never met cheer for me, like that's a that's a that's a feeling that money can't buy. That's an adrenaline rush that honestly is amazing. It's it's like a it's like its own drug. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a high mm-hmm. though, like and that and that high is like Yeah, I know when I was, I'm a big wrestling fan, and I know remember being younger, watching the Ultimate Warrior running through the house, knocking stuff over, <laughs> thinking, <laughs> thinking, I, thinking I can uh, body slam everybody. Yeah, My mom used to give me choke slams, choke slams all day. <laughs> like, 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 um, give me choke slams, he'll throw me halfway, like, legitimately, he'll throw me halfway across the room. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> my mom would be like, "What are you doing? Stop that shit, girl!" He's like, "Hey, my my niece ain't finna be sit up here and be no punk, you know." And like, it used to just go you know, like, it, it, it used to be the dopest. I ain't gonna lie, it, it it's amazing. My cousin Ryan used to even flow DDT me every time he see me. I know he watching my cousin Ryan. He used to just grab me, DDT me. Then my other cousin Earl used to help double team me, and they put he put me in the walls of Jericho, man. <laughs> I go from even flu. I to put a <laughs> few friends in the walls of Jericho, by the way. Like, yeah, that, man, that's, that's, a, that's, that's the go-to move. move. That that's and the sharpshooter. Look, oh, the walls yeah. of Jericho and the sharpshooter. Are... My cousins used to used to brutalize me because I was the youngest. I was the youngest, so they used to just. Just take turns, dudes and wrestling moves on. We used to have cardboard belts. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you. <laughs> it was the days back then. Man, those Speaking the of days. finishing maneuvers, what's your finishing maneuver? My finishing maneuver is my Larry. Um, uh, for a lot of people who don't know, I am, as you can see, what it says right here, Miss What That Larry Do. Um, um, Oh, nine wrestling people, that's the clothesline. I, I got your fucking head off. Look, 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 look. And, and, and if they don't know what a clothesline is, I knock your fucking head off, respectfully, though. That's what that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, but, like, like that's not my... I mean, that's a move that I have now because when I was starting, I had the spear. Um, that's my go-to. <laughs> that's all I have. Like, like I could truly sit here and say, you know, it was a spear, uh, a flying STO. Um, it's like, I'll have to show you. It's like I shoot you into me. We both fly in the air, and I just, it's like a, it's like an inverted rock bottle. Oh, yeah. I know what the STO is. 
And speaking of that, look, my cousin Earl on here who used to torment me, he just commented on it at the bottom. He tormented me. He up here laughing at me right now because he used to put me in the dog on sharpshooter and Boston Crab, man. <laughs> he's on my uh he's on my page because it's going live on my page and uh the veteran the smoke page. Oh, well then let me go try to find this bad boy. I'm still talking to you so I can share it too. See, you didn't even tell nobody. Oh fine. man, I'm sorry. I mean you can share it. I'm sorry. Man, I gave you the link. I'm sorry, you can share it. It's on the the the, uh, the Mo Young page and the Venom and Smoke page, but as Lala come back, I'll just fill in. You know, I butchered the, the I butchered up the opening because my my computer went haywire. But hey, uh, welcome all y'all back. I'm just waiting for this uh, uh, Lala to come back. She's for those who just coming back, coming on. She's a professional wrestler and. We're about to get into some some topics, and huh? here she goes. She's back. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm just filling in. I had to do time fill. I didn't want them looking at the black screen. Hey, hey. Yo, I was like, yo, I was like, what's going on? So I'm like, I want to share it too. <laughs> oh yeah. Me. So I was like, all right, let me go look on Facebook. And right when they go click on where it said we're live, it totally like took me out, and I was like, no. I was like, oh, let me go back. Let me oh, go man. back. Here go Mrs. Rochelle Mrs. Said, I want to rest. Yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> you want to She, she, uh, she you took me down to the field last night. She spared me last night. So she she, she tougher than she looks. <laughs> is that the is that the is that the wifey? That's the wifey. That's the hey, former Miss Chapel. We don't wifey. go at we don't go by Chapel no more. We leave that with the other other place. But um yeah, we're not gonna speak of them words. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're not gonna speak up those words. I don't want to get sued. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're right, right, right. Look, yeah. look, look. You gonna have to yeah, yeah. start acting like Marshawn Lynch. Um, I just showed up, so I won't get fired. <laughs> <laughs> look, she's a tough chick. See, you're a tough chick. I tell you, I bet. Look, she you beats got me no up, man. Out of me. No <laughs> argument out of me. Look, she beats me up. I promise you. She she, 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 she got a hell of a lariat too. Yeah, she has a hell of a lariat because she clotheslined me before. She has a hell of a lariat. I'm telling you, it's, it's nice. So 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 does that, mean, does that mean it was it was love at first, lariat? Yeah, man. You know, I'm like when she clotheslined the hell out of me. I said I gotta go with her. Man, I said I look. It's not how her beauty is not even a booty. It's hilarious. That's what, that's what got me. <laughs> she clotheslined me. And I'm like, I need something like that in my life. <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hurting, but oh, I can't stop laughing. Oh. <laughs> uh, one of the reasons of why I. <laughs> you can't stop laughing. One of the reasons why I do. Um, Yo, cause like I'm literally just picturing her larrying the fuck out of you and like dragging you to her cave like those cavemen. <laughs> Jane takes over. Don't give her ideas. Please don't give her ideas. <laughs> She's just in the next room. Don't give her ideas. She's gonna drag you all. <laughs> oh snap! What happened? And then her, uh, then her son gonna hit me with the uh, frog splash, man. So. <laughs> no, they double can you hear me? Here, man. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, you good? There's something going on. Thank you. We hear you clear. You hear me? Did you just die on me? Oh, what the... Oh, you good? Yeah. We can hear you. I can't hear nothing you saying, bro. Oh, man. Oh, dude. <laughs> You can hear me now? You hear me now? Uh-oh, we have a technical difficulties. <laughs> Try getting on and coming back off. Shit, I heard you. It's a... Uh... Can you hear me? You hear me now? Yeah. We can hear yes. you. Can you Sweetness. Hear me? 
Yes. Now, uh, I couldn't hear you, you at first, so I was like, man, I got to fix this and figure out what's going on with my life. <laughs> oh, man, this technology, man, it does that. Yeah, we, that's what happened when but, this live uh, mistakes happen. It's all right. My, my lariat, <laughs> uh, I love watching Stan Hansen and JBL. Oh, yeah. uh, and I used to just love the way that they knock people's fucking heads off. And I was like, <laughs> I'm here for this. I'm here for this. Like, I, cause I, I'm gonna probably get some heat for this, but I don't care. We have a lot of wrestlers now in this business that are a bunch of pussies. Um, right. They forget that wrestling is a contact sport. Um, there's a lot of people that, you know, look at wrestling and say, oh, wrestling's that fake shit. But it's like, I promise you, you wouldn't be able to last 10 minutes in this fake shit, you know? There's no different from watching us wrestle than going to go pay money and watching a movie. The only difference is we don't get to yell, cut, and bring in our stuntman. We are our stuntman. And it's not in a in a in a closed off warehouse. Well, I mean, well, you know, right now it's in a closed off yeah. because of the pandemic. But you know, yeah. it's in it it's it's in front of a live studio audience, how you want to put it. You know, so you have a lot of people who, as they've done in life. You know, try to pussyfoot shit and try to do it the easy way. Well, I want to be a wrestler, but I don't want to get hit. Then don't be a fucking wrestler. Wrestling is a contact sport. You have to be a very, you have to have a very fucked up in mind individual in your mind to be a professional wrestler. That is a lot of pain. You have to be able to take pain from your neck down. And sometimes from your head to your toes. You feel me? Like, uh, the, the trend alone is excruciating. You feel me? Like, People thinking that you're going to learn how to be fake. No, you're going to learn how to protect yourself and the person that you're in the ring with. What people don't understand is if you don't bump right, you can break something. Oh. Them ropes alone can fuck you up. <laughs> you feel me? Like if, yeah. if, if you don't tuck your chin and if you don't take the proper bump, not only can you give yourself a concussion, not only can you fuck your neck up, not only if you don't know the basics in wrestling, you can't be a wrestler because at the end of the day, you're in the ring with somebody else and you are trusting this person with your life and vice versa. So these are things that you have to make sure that you know, this is why training is so fundamental because you just can't get in the ring and do whatever the fuck you want to. You feel me? A lot of people think that, Oh, that's all it is. No, it's not. You know, this is why you see a lot of people get hurt. And like a lot of people, how do I put it? Charlotte, can you go get my, Headset. Hold on. <laughs> we got it. Don't worry. I own this, so you can take your time. <laughs> you take your time. I own this podcast. So you're not worrying about time. We'll be on here all night. <laughs> but thanks for having some more technical difficulties. Uh, uh, I, we're going to get into more topics. This is just, you know, waiting on to get our headsets back. Okay. Let me see if I can find something. I don't know if y'all can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. If you can hear me, I can't hear y'all, but it was like, um, one of the things that I was saying was, it's like, people don't understand that if you don't train and know how to take care of the person that you're in the ring with, that person could die, let alone yourself if you don't know what you're doing. And that's why it's always a major thing to get trained, to know what you're doing so you won't be deemed as somebody that's unsafe or somebody that's a shooter or somebody that just want to, like, hurt somebody else. You know what I'm saying? So that's one of those things about it. And Hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, shit, it's the wrong way. Oh, it's the wrong way. I can hear you. Hold on. I'm going to have to reach. Oh. Well, we're going to get her back. I'll just bear with us. You know, technical difficulties happen. It happens, and she'll be right back. She's getting her uh, set up together. You know, you know, you never know what goes on here. You know, we doing something strictly, you know, strictly from off offline. It can be, you know, have some technical difficulties. So, you know, this is, you know, we still got a lot of show left, a lot of topics we still want to get into. 
I want to kind of give him a week. It's kind of wait for her to uh, come back so we can do, uh, so she can give her insight. Because the world of wrestling is usually, so uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a strange and sometimes exciting world. So I want her to give her a view on this when she's back. So here we go. <laughs> Back like you never left. <laughs> there we go. We finish telling your story. Oh, I left. Man. Um, but no, I was saying like the main thing about it that people don't understand is you need to train because the one thing you don't want to do is be deemed as somebody that's unsafe or somebody who is a shooter or trying to hurt somebody. And people don't understand or realize that training is very fundamental to being a wrestler. People are like, well, I can just like get my own ring and da da da. Yeah, you could and look like a dumb fuck. But what's the whole point? You know, if you're really serious about being in this business, you're going to work hard, you know, and that's the thing about it, which is like one of my sayings that I have. Everybody want to be famous, but don't nobody want to work hard for it. You know, everybody's want shit handed to them. You know what I'm saying? And that's not how it is, you know, but once again, you got these homeboy bullshit that, you know, say, bro, I really want to wrestle, man. You want to wrestle, man? Come on, man. I'll let you have a promotion. But I haven't trained. Don't worry about it, man. We're friends. Come on. Stupid shit, you know? Yeah, right. So, man, that's that bullshit. It seems like you have a lot of <laughs> a lot of anger towards these people. Because I love wrestling. And this is the thing about it. Like, so many people have shitted on me. You know, because I'm not out here a size six. And I'm not out here showing my my ass and my tits to get booked and you know as sad as it sounds this these are facts you feel me like these are like massive facts the fact that these people have set up here well, and have highlight video. oh my god that is a horrible <laughs> highlight video jesus you found an old highlight video why would you do this to me <laughs> i don't know god like, 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 video like no no put, like put up a bit like put up the Ooh. no stop that like put up a no like put up a match or something this is old. You, like you really want me to feel old. You okay. trying to make me feel old as shit. I don't appreciate that. I do not appreciate that. <laughs> I don't appreciate that, okay? We, All right. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, look up. Mud hole somebody. Look up. No, no, no. Look up. Look up. Just type in Ruthless Lala versus, and you will see, like, the thumbnail will show another female hitting a chick in the head with a chair. Put that one up. If you're going to put anything up, Mo, you put that one up. Like this, I appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, you, you so see, you, you hit somebody in the head. It is if you put in Ruthless Lala versus the thumbnail of how you know it'll be that it'll be you'll see a female hitting another female in the head with a chair. That's the match you want to watch. That's the match you want to show everybody. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? That's the match I throw a bitch through a door. Whoa! Oh, oh <laughs> it's 13 minutes long. I don't know. <laughs> Trust me. You can have it playing while we talking. Oh, yeah. I got you. We're going to multitask. Okay, I got, got you, bro. I got you. Okay, I'm going to get it. Uh -oh, going to get go. it. Here we go. We going for it. Oh, no, we don't. We, look. This is, <laughs> yeah, I want to see somebody get thrown through the door. Is it a tag team match? No, no, it's a, it's a, it is the Queen of the Monsters match, which is a free for all. It's every woman for herself. The woman that will win will move on to the main event to face yeah, the champion. You know, they got ads on, on YouTube. So. Oh, these are nice ads. Look, look, <laughs> shout out to the ads. Shout out to ads on YouTube, yeah. you know, um. As hey, you can see, that is me like right there. Uh, I am the champ. I am Ruthless Two Belts. I am one <laughs> half of the WSU World Tag Team Champions. Uh, and I am the undefeated, undisputed WWX Women's Champion. Um, in this match, you have me, Savannah Evans, Devine, who is phenomenal. So is Savannah Evans. And you also have Holly Dead, who is a great wrestler as well. And uh, honestly, this is what would happen if you put two queen like if, if you put four queen monsters in a match this is what would happen you know what i'm saying like this is what would happen now here's mm -hmm. the thing about it if you notice like oh man this thing is blurry now he's blurry, blurry now oh he mad now 
Blurred it out, man. What's going on, man? Y'all tripping. Y'all want to see greatness. <laughs> it's blurred it out, man. Like, okay. Y'all want back to be great. I'll see if I can get it working again. <laughs> I'll see. Man, but we really want to get questions. to Let's this. Let's go in. Let's get in it. Let's yeah. go for it. And we, hey, look, just look up Rootless La La Versus and you get to see <laughs> what's going on. But I tried to do this YouTube tripping. He so, tried. YouTube yeah, with the shit. Yeah, I tried. I tried. Now, hey, this ain't going to be the last first time. Last time you're going to be on here, man. So, we hey. ended like swimwear, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep. So we're going to get from being light to something that's kind of dark that's happening. And it's this whole speaking out controversy that's going on in the professional wrestling. And for those who don't know who speaking out is, I'm gonna let we just lie like explain it because if you're in that world. Speaking out, well, let me let me tell y'all what speaking out was supposed to be about. Speaking out was supposed to be a platform for men and women, not just women, men and women who have been sexually assaulted sexually harassed um pretty much everything disrespectful in this business you know and it even goes uh, it even goes to the full extent of rape you know I, I i hate to say that but you know it does and the sad part about it is it shouldn't have took now for speaking not to happen and i say that because i was one of those people who spoke out back in the day about you know being spoke to like I was a whore or being spoke to like my job was to just suck dick, you know? And when I spoke out about it, I got fired. Like I got let go from that promotion, you know? And even when I got let go from that promotion, the fact that I put them on blast without saying their names, they literally went to the other promotion and was like, yo, like you need to take her out. Like you need to take her off, uh, off the, off the show and we'll send you some people to you know to do it. Hey, Mike is pulling up. Um, and was like, yo, um, they you know, mode. like, well, they tried to, but you know, I was still there. Hey, be looking so you can go out there and get it. And um, and so it got to the point to where there was a. I've seen a lot of women get treated like shit. Now I, I I'm probably gonna piss some people off some deserve it because that's what they liked you know you have a lot of females who excuse me want to get into this business just to look cute just to fucking suck you feel what i'm saying they didn't care yeah. about learning the basics they didn't care about you could just go outside you're being i love really how you have two no conversations reason. at once <laughs> that's talent it's, it's a capricorn thing um and so <laughs> um my thing with that is, is that you had a lot of women that literally did that. You know, they literally slept with promoters to get booked. You know, they fucked the bookers to get booked. You feel me? These are things that some of these women have done. So I'm gonna be honest with you. When they were talked to like they wasn't shit, I didn't feel bad because this is what you presented yourself as. Now, what I didn't yeah. like is the fact that just because these women did it, these men automatically thought that this is how all women were going to be and if that's not how you were you were like you were shunned upon if i'm saying that right you was like cast it out like oh well you know if you don't if you don't want to you know like how badly do you want to yeah. be booked i don't want to be booked bad enough yeah. to fuck you right and like i find it funny now to where there's some of these people who are supporting the speaking out who knew back in the day it wasn't going right and you just sat by and didn't do nothing because it was your homeboy. You feel me? I've known guys who literally have had tryout with big promotions, with big companies. I'm talking about major companies. But because they wouldn't fuck the female who was in the power at that time, they couldn't get no contract, which is not right. You know, like it, it, it's, well, a, it's a shame. Men and, and two like that. Yeah, men and women. Like, bruh, like, ain't nobody safe, you hear me? And then now you have it to where all these pedophiles are coming out. And and, and then now you got these women who want to come out and talk about, oh, well, let me tell you about this relationship. Pause. Speaking out ain't about what happened between you and your boyfriend. 
whether he was in the business or not. Nobody gives a fuck. We're talking about people, like Matt Riddle. Right. We're talking about people who no 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 no. I'm talking about people who want to sit up there and be like, oh, you know, well, this is what's going on and uh this is what's happening and all this stuff. What did he say? Is he for the leave? Is he leaving? Okay. No, 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 it's cool. Appreciate it. So it's like women has been coming out and talking about their past relationships, and it's like that's not what speaking out is about. You feel what I'm saying? Speaking out is for people who came out about being assaulted and abused and got turned away. Don't nobody care about your freaky escapades you had with your boyfriend. Nobody cares, you know. And and now you want to try to get him banned, try to get him blackballed. But no, bro. And then you got women want to come out and talk about, oh, well, you know, well, this man he touched me when I was 15 years old. But what you're not telling is, is that you were 14 years old. Going around telling people you was 18. Mm. So if I sit up and call out all the names of this person that I'm talking about, I too would have to deal with some court shit. So I'm trying to keep it subliminal, but like I know a female <laughs> for a fact that literally went around telling people she was 18 when she was 14, fucking grown ass men. And and yeah, her parents knew about it. And her parents knew about it and didn't give a shit. You feel me? But now this person is in is in the better limelight and want to try to come out, but then yet you done already shot yourself in the foot because you just sit up here and say that you knew you was 15 years old talking to a 30-year-old man. That, that so once again, this me. speaking out ain't about you because yeah. this speaking out is about men who took advantage of underage women. Not underage girls who wanted to be grown and want to be in an adult situation and put yourself in this shit. You feel me? Right. And I know people are going to be like, oh, that's wrong, la la, that's wrong, la la, like, how can you say that? I can easily say that is because you don't sit up here and put yourself out there like a hoe and then want somebody to feel bad for you. Right. That's like it's me going out here talking to underage dudes Knowing how old they are, and they want to say, "Well, I'm sorry, I didn't think about what I was saying." No, 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 no. Miss me with the bullshit. You know what you're doing, and in what world do you think that it was okay for a 15 year old to talk to a 30 year old? You got a fucked up frame of mind to feel that shit. You feel me? So this whole speaking out has pissed me the fuck off because there's been a lot of people who've been needing to speak out who has literally been through a lot of shit in this wrestling business and was told to be quiet. But they can't even come out about it because you got these other people who trying to do this shit for clout, trying to get some fame, trying to throw people under the bus who you shouldn't be throwing under the bus. But then it always comes back to these people. Half of these people already knew this shit was going on and they didn't say nothing because it was their best friend. It was their homeboy. And now the shit that came out, now you want to try to be like, oh, I can't believe he did that. You stupid motherfucker. You knew damn well that he was doing this shit. Because you was right there with him. One of them that got impacted. I know Joey Ryan was one that got impacted a lot. He he can't get booked anywhere. I see. They had too many people come out on him. Austin, Austin Theory was getting the push. He got knocked off. For talking to the minor. Yep, there's a lot of there's a lot of them that that's getting hit. And, and the thing about it is though, people already knew about it. And they, they turned a blind eye. You feel me? They knew about it and they turned a blind eye. And then now it's coming out. Oh yeah, yeah. Shame on you. Shut the fuck up. You knew about it. Yeah. And you sat there and you let that shit happen. So you just as guilty as the other person. You feel me? Like it yeah, sucks yeah. that this speaking out movement is supposed to be about people. Being able to speak out when they was qu- when they was told to be shut up, and they can't now because you got all these other people trying to do this shit for clout. And I'm upset about it. I really am upset about it. That's why, like, the fact that I only came out and spoke 50 percent of what was going on with me, it didn't change shit. You feel me? It didn't change shit. Like, people ain't nobody hit up Sean Hernandez talking about say dog. Like, why would you say that back in the day? I didn't get no message from Sean Hernandez saying, you know what? I was a dick to you back in the day, and I want to apologize. No, and I'm not going to get it because Sean don't think that he done anything wrong. You feel what I'm saying? And when you have somebody like that who don't feel like that there's no wrong that they can do, you have to separate yourself from them because there's a lot of motherfuckers like that in the wrestling business feeling like that what they did was justified, and it's not. 
You know, you got promoters who like Brandon Oliver of River City Wrestling in San Antonio, Texas, who knew this shit was going on in his in, in, in his locker room and did nothing about it because him and Sean are buddy buddies. You feel me? Yeah, but yet, even though I've said this, this don't this don't stop the promotion from still going. You know, it don't stop the fact from, you know, people still looking at Sean Hernandez like he's a great person and all this shit. Hey, you know what? Could Sean be a great person now? Yeah, he could. It's possible. But it don't change the fact that he was a straight up dick back in the day and hasn't apologized or tried to make amends for the bullshit that he caused. You know, like dealing with that shit, like people don't understand. That's one of the main reasons why I left Texas. Is because if you wasn't part of these homeboy cliques, or if you wasn't fucking or sucking to get booked, or if you wasn't trying to sell your shit, you know what I'm saying? Like put your pussy out there like that. One nobody trying to deal with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or if they did deal with you, it was because you had a you know you had a flat stomach, you had your tits out, you got your ass out. You know that's what sells. Sex sells. I've had so many promoters to tell me this shit in Texas. Like you know this female is pure trash. But you only book her because sex sells. So they're taking an old Vince McMahon model, like get get a model and who you can't do anything. But these the ain't range. even models. But these ain't good. even models. These are just like you know, like chicks who just want to look good, you know, and like don't care Regular about learning girls. how to wrestle. You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> but but the promoter is gonna pay them like a hundred or two hundred dollars, but then. People like myself, or like people like my tag, like my old tag team partner, Baby D. You know, like, like legitimately, we want to pay us maybe 20, 30 bucks. And we're like, well, you know, that's all I can afford. Get the fuck out of here, bro. Get the fuck out of here. Like, prime example, um, I went in today on her on her page. Well, not not, not on her page, but something she promoted. So there was a there's a show that's about to come out. Hey, can you turn the light off for me? There's a show that's about to come out that's, you know, a wrestling show that they're about to do. And one of the things is it was called a the, the best body contest. You feel what I'm mm. saying? And so she had a friend that's on the show and she asked a friend, hey, do you know what this contest is about? And even the friend didn't know. So she posted up on the on the post that she saw. She was like, so we're still doing this best body contest. You know what I'm saying? Like. I thought we got rid of this. You know what I'm saying? This whole body shame and shit supposed to have been done a long time ago. You feel me? Right. So how are we still back here? And like, why would you have a contest like this when you're going to have all different kind of wrestlers on there? And you saying best body contest, like that's going to be putting down people. You know what I'm saying? Because let's say somebody like me who doesn't have a six pack wanted to go and my confidence is so high that I feel like I would make it in the best body contest. And I get in and I got people calling me fat, got people calling me all names and all shit like that. So what does that really prove? Are y'all really condoning this shit? Is that really where we're still at? And she didn't even go into the lens of how I just went into. And you got wrestlers who, mind you, once again, who are in that category of athletes who want to yeah. come and try to attack her. Well, how about you fucking ask this and this? And I'm like, I find it funny of how you came just, and just how funny you just shed, said your opinion and people want to come out and attack you. And like I said it on there, they can all eat a bag of dicks. <laughs> Period. Man, if you don't like what I'm like saying, you can ask it because at the end of the day, it's bullshit. Right. This is what's wrong with the wrestling business now. Oh, well, if you ain't got no six pack and if you ain't showing your ass or your tits, we can't do nothing with you. But then, yeah, you can wrestle better than 90 percent of your roster. But because I'm a little bit more thicker, because he's a little bit more thicker, because she's a little bit more thicker. You ain't trying to give them no opportunity because once again, sex sells. Yeah, you got fans and wrestlers out here legitimately talking about, oh, this chick is the best athlete ever. And she's the greatest wrestler ever, and they're and they're taking that off of how she looks, not how she wrestles, not how she performs in the ring. You feel me? Yeah. And it's just the worst. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it's it's excuse my language, oh, man. but like it's man, <laughs> man, like this shit got me heated because like I've been in this business for 17 years, and that's constantly been the main reason of why I wasn't pushed. And I wasn't put in those situations to wrestle people who could have helped me get farther. You feel me? 99% of my friends are guys because I don't, I don't, I don't vibe with females like that. You know what I'm saying? If I vibe with you as a female, it's because you're a real ass female. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I can't, I can't sit around and talk with women about purses and heels and nails. That's not my forte. I like to play Madden. I like to shoot some shit. Okay. <laughs> I like to watch wrestling. I like to just chill with some boy shorts on and a wife beater. That's my ish. You feel me? That's what I like to do. I like to watch horror movies, martial arts. That's the shit I like. So that ain't my forte. So I vibe more with dudes than I do females. And a lot of females don't like it and they get their feelings about it. But once again, they can go bleep themselves because I, I, I got to watch my language. You know what I'm saying? They can go bleep <laughs> yeah, themselves. I, was, I think my stepson was watching dudes. So, you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. We understand. So I'm sorry. You. We understand. Hey. Because, man, right. like, I've said this. I have been saying this shit for so long, even back in the day. And I can't, and everybody wanted to say, oh, I was just jealous that, you know, I have been in the business for so long and I haven't gotten the opportunity and, you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just upset. No, no, no. If, if, if you want to come out with booty floss on, that's fine. I don't care if you, you can wear whatever you want to wear. All I ask is that when you get in that ring and that bell rings, you wrestle. That's it. If you want to do this all wrestling and like this mud wrestling, go 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 somewhere else with that. This is this is this is my life. This is how I feed my kids. This is my passion. This is what I love. And for me not to get a downright legitimate chance to show myself in front of and and wrestle a talent that I can learn from that's up there because I ain't fucking or sucking. Damn it. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. Sorry. <laughs> It's okay. Hey, kid, kid, hey, this uh, Nick Show for this part. Just tell him you can't watch this part. Tell him I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, right. But it's like, it's, it's, like, no it's like, the fact that, like, it's an like, adult issue. You don't need to be listening to that anyway. I appreciate it's just, it. Though, but. It's, it, it sucks because it's like to be from Texas and to not have Texas to even claim you as one of their wrestlers, it hurts. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I had to legitimately leave Texas to actually get the respect that I've earned, to actually get the matches that I've wanted because promoters actually see that I have what it takes. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like that's why, like, I'm glad that I don't live in Texas no more. Like, I, I'm so glad. Like, I, I, I come back to see my family, my mom and my kids. You know what I'm saying? But besides that, when I come home, I come home. I come home to see my trainer, his wife, and like a couple of my bros. That's it. Since I've been home, I ain't been trying to get no bookings in Texas. Why? Fuck Texas when it comes to me wrestling. Fuck Texas. Like they ain't gave a shit about me, so I don't give a shit about them. But I will ride or die for Tennessee. I will ride or die for New Jersey, New York. I'll ride or die for North Carolina. I'll ride or die for Georgia. You know what I'm saying? I'll ride or die for Alabama. I'll rather die for Arkansas because these are all promote all places that I mentioned to you that brought me in and let me do what I do best and love me for it instead of trying to cast me away for it because they want to bring their girlfriend who the only reason that she's actually in the business is off of her dick sucking abilities and you want me to put her over but yet this bitch don't even know the difference between a headlock or a wrist lock but that's my problem that's my fault yeah, that ain't, you, that ain't you, my fault that, right. that, that's not my fault because yeah when you were bad you can make anybody look good but bro there's a limit to how you can make somebody look good I think Period. you can get that from any job man you know when you're good at your job and then they bring somebody lazy in man you know it makes it triply hard on the person who's doing the job so I like understand. Texas like Texas got so many perverted promoters like I like honestly if I wanted the headache I will put them all on blast right now because my gives a fucks have left a long time ago. But I ain't trying to get you no lawsuit and oh um, me no lawsuit. So we gonna man, talk man, about it. They never sue me. I show you. I'm from New Orleans. We don't play that lawsuit shit. <laughs> That's how we feel. You said you with the <laughs> What you gonna sue me for? You gonna take my computer? <laughs> 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 They gonna come after me. Well, everybody worried about them, man. Oh, I told you, the name of my show is Venom and Smoke. We're gonna spit some venom and we always ready for the smoke. So any smoke man. these people want to come with, we can be with it, man. It is it's, it's just if a, they don't want nobody to shit on them, they should not be doing wrong. That's how I feel. 
And that's the thing about it, though, is it's like it's like it's so sad that I've seen a lot of people being been called out and a lot of people just still been trying to sweep it under the rug like it never happened. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's it's, it's a shame, bro. It's truthfully a fucking shame, dude. Like it is. It's. Oh, man. It's it's the worst. You see, this is very stressful, man. Like this is it is, yo. I know they're speaking out stuff and then the body shaming because I know wrestlers like Nia Jax and stuff like that get body awesome shaming. Kong, oh, awesome, awesome Kong, Kong. Uh, Nyla Rose, uh, Baby D, myself. Yeah. Uh, Nyla Rose get it doubly because she's a transgender right. and she's thicker. So right. she gets it doubly. Right, you know what I'm saying? So. And, and there's a lot of people like, you know, like Barrington Hughes, you know, he gets shamed. You know, like, 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 I'm so tired of people trying to body shame men and women when honestly they got their own skeletons in their closet. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, baby, change, you're jumping ahead of me, baby. Hold on, wait, so, what you change do, we, do you want to see? I want to see, I want to see these janky ass promoters get taken out of business. I want to see promoters who care what the fans want to see and not what their boys in the back want to see. You know what I'm saying? I I, mm-hmm. I want to see change. And it's not going to be a change until all this homeboy bullshit gets done with. Because I can speak out all day. Mo can speak out all day. Baby D can speak out all day. It ain't going to mean shit if we're the only people that's speaking out. Because other people don't want to speak out because it's their friend or they don't want to look like a bad person. But at the end of the day, if you doing the right thing makes you look like a bad person, what does that say about you? Fix the title. There we go. How can we prevent BS in the wrestling in wrestling in the future? Like, <laughs> like, like real shit. What does that say about you? You don't want to do the right thing because it's going to hurt your homeboy's feelings. Well, then you don't want to do the right thing. And you should get the fuck out of right. business. This business ain't about touching minors and trying to fucking suck and get your way ahead. It's about passion. It's about hard work, dedication. That's what it's about. But yet, these people then got into wrestling for the wrong thing. Well, I'm just in wrestling because I want to look good. I'm just in wrestling because I want to get chicks. I'm just in wrestling because I want my friends to think that I'm cool. So you got these weekend warriors. You got these ring rats trying to be female wrestlers. You got these ring rats trying to be male wrestlers. Ring rats, this ain't females. It's men too. There would never be a change. There would never be a change until people wake the fuck up and stand and take a stand. Because at the end of the day, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. And I refuse to sit here and be okay with the body shaming. I refuse to sit here and be okay with pe- men and women fucking and sucking to get booked. While you got people like Baby D, you got people like Mike Cobb, you got people like Caden Say, you got people like Riza, you got you got people like Ali Bama, you got people like Nick Law, Harrison Hughes, and like Murder Uno, and you got people like Joe Black, and you got like 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 the list goes on. Of people who don't sit here and take the bullshit, but because we don't take the bullshit, we get told to be silent, or we don't get to be on this show because we don't pissed off some one of the homeboys of the promoter, and we can't get on there because he's in his feelings because of some real shit that I spoke. And that's all you can do. And for people who don't know, ring rats is the equivalent of a wrestling thought. If y'all didn't know what ring rats was, honestly, I <laughs> think that's way too good of an explanation. It is a whore. It is a yeah, ratchet yeah. ass. ass who has there, no respect for herself or himself they legitimately just want to fuck and suck to go back to their friends and say eh, I fuck this wrestler <laughs> that's what a ring rat is well <laughs> and, then, and, then wrestler, and then wrestler she or he gets to fucking that one wrestler 10 minutes later they go fuck another wrestler like legitimately that's what that, that's what a, that's a ring rat is that's what it's, they like, job it's is. like it's like when a rat gets some cheese and there's some more cheese in front of them. Right, right when they get to eating that cheese, they go to the next cheese. That's a ring rat. Yeah. So this it seems like I told people it was a wrestling world. It's a complex world. It's not just man. You know what you see on TV because as you can see, Vice did a whole thing over the dark side of the ring. That's just like touching the surface of what goes on. And like me, I'm a big wrestling fan, so I watch and I read all kind of stuff that happens. 
And yo, yeah. and that's and, and and so like you said, that barely scratches the surface, but barely scratches the surface. You feel me? It's just it, it, mm. it's it it hurts my heart, yo. Like 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 I hate the fact that I just now got to where I needed to be in my 16 to 17, like in these past two years, I have finally gotten to where I want to be in that I've been trying to get to for the past 15 years before then. You feel me? And I can never, the most thing that I've had happen to me in Texas about the dream match that I've wanted and I got was I got to wrestle Teddy Hart. I got to wrestle Austin Kong. I got to wrestle Jazz. Shout out to Jazz. That's that's my fam. I love them to death. I got to wrestle. Um, I got to wrestle Ray Rowe, Crazy Mary Dobson, which by the way, congratulations to them too for having their first child. Uh, you know, like these are people that I've always wanted to wrestle in Dallas and Fort Worth and Grand Prairie areas. You know what I'm saying? It's a shame that I had to go to the Rio Grand Valley to get an opportunity to wrestle the wrestlers that I mentioned to you. All because half of the promoters here in Texas are pervert, are perverts, or they're they're with that homeboy shit. You feel me? Oh well, nobody wants to see that. That's because you never give the fans an option to. You always want to put these overly athletic people on there. Who do you want to see face this W the former WWE superstar or this former TNA or this former Japan or like like you never gave the people the option that they want to see. And if somebody did say, oh well, I want to see Baby D or I want to see this. You make it seem like you didn't even read what it says. You know what I'm saying? And it's just a shame. It's a shame, bro. Like that's why TNA. I think TNA going down because they trying to promote all WWE guys, and it's just like you're pushing your talent down. So I can imagine on a smaller point? scale. Like, 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 like. Don't get me wrong. There are some people that finally got signed that should have been signed a long time ago. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. But what's legitimately the whole point of getting these big promotions that you want to do change, but you ain't doing change. You just still still yeah. bringing in former WWE, former this person. You got all these magnificent, amazing, talented people who's on the indie scene, like Jaden Newman. He should be up there. Brett Eisen, he should be up there. You know, and, and, and like I said, I always rather die for my click EOW all day. Ryan Piles, Mike Cobb, Caden Stade, Matt Madison, Josh Crow, like Dixon. Like these are people who should be out there shining. You know what I'm saying? You got people like LBK and you got people like uh, Luther X. You got people like uh Britney Wonder, who honestly she should have been signed. Like, like, like you got a dope, like the, they're so like I could talk your head off about all the people who deserve to be in a better limelight, but they're not because they ain't part of that click shit. You know, you got people like Eric Silva, Austin Towers, who's 6'10. I'm sorry, 6'11. Austin Towers is a 6'11 wrestler who moves like he's 6'2. Man. You got like Trevor he's Aeon, who's who who has it? Eric Silva, who has it? James, uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, uh, Aaron Black has it. Like, these people are, 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 like, you got people like Ashton Starr, and you got people like fucking Ugh. Don't come for you. <laughs> I think you named Owen enough, Knight, though, you know what I'm saying? He's an amazing wrestler. You know what I'm saying? Like he shouldn't like these are people who should be getting opportunities. You know what I'm saying? To show why they're the best, but yet you keep getting swept under the rug because the promoter ain't your best friend. The promoter don't want to put you out there. He's just gonna put his friends out there. When is that gonna stop? Like when is it gonna stop? They gotta stop soon because there will be no change until people getting... decide to fucking change. Yeah. Unless us people like me, uh, like me, or viewers stop watching, that's the only way it's gonna stop change. It's gonna change when they affect the bottom line. So, like, I like I said, wrestling is a hard rule, but I just want you to know that, that I can't hear you. <laughs> oh man, not this again! You can you can hear me now? You can hear me now? <laughs> I don't know what it is. It it it, it may be me. Can you hear me now? Ali, Ali, oxen free. Nope, nope, it's not me. We can hear you. We can hear you. I'll probably have to leave and come back. Yeah, you probably. 
Probably, yeah, I got, I got probably have to do that. Hold on, I'm gonna I'm be back. Time. Gotcha. Uh, we almost to the end of the show. We got one more topic I'm going to cover. And uh, I'm hoping y'all are enjoying Rootless Lala. She giving it to you. Rootless, like her name says. It's pretty rootless what's going on. Because the rest of the world is pretty rootless. And uh, I'm just like I say, I'm going to give me a couple shout outs before this is over. I'm going to shout out my girl, man, Rochelle. She, she been the one with all the comments, you know. She uh she helps me uh keep this thing running. She helps me run my page. She's oh uh, what's up what's up the the mind man? Thank you man for joining the mind. Uh yeah I think she had a, something wrong with her system, but man it's my boy from Tulane the uh, the mind man. How you hanging, bro? And uh. Like I said, like a shout out to you too, Demond, for joining the show, man. I appreciate you, man. I remember, man, man, Demond was about to start start on the radio station at uh, Loyola, man. It was that was good times, good times. But I want to shout out y'all, man, for everybody who 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 support me. You know, starting something new. You know, it's not easy to start something new. You know, uh, I'm going out on the whim. I'm just doing all this on my own, you know, my own money, own equipment, help from family and friends to get this off on the road. So I just need y'all to like, subscribe to it, share it, you know, just get the name out, you know, and you too maybe be a part of the show. She's back, y'all. <laughs> See, I told you they could hear both. And, you know, I don't know what's going on with your thing, but they can hear y'all both. So I'm letting you know now. For now on, if it goes back and I say I can hear you, just type it to me. Or I'm going to try to I read can. your lips as much as I try. I'm going like, <laughs> to type it to you. Don't worry about it. I'm looking at you. We're going like, to <laughs> get one more topic I have for you. I know wrestling is a, a hard thing. So uh, any ailments you have from wrestling, like performing in the ring, any ailments that affect you to this day? Um, as far as like things that I've like, as far as like things I dealt with there, or like illnesses or health or something like that. Oh, all the all that health wise, uh, anything that ails you. I actually, um, I had to step away from wrestling, I believe, three years ago because um, I was battling skin cancer at that at that time which I beat skin cancer and I came back to wrestling. But little that I know is, is that for the 15 years that I was battling that skin cancer, I also had a skin disease called HS, which is hydronitis supportiva. And uh, it is a infection to the lymph nodes and the glands. So um, I would show now if it, if it wouldn't like probably make everybody throw up, but it's the worst. Um, my, my armpits don't look like my armpits. Um, like it's hard to talk about it because it's like, these, this is something that like people don't understand that I go through on a regular basis and to constantly be in pain. It's, it's, it's fucked up. Uh, I also have a chemical imbalance. So any medication that I'm given, um, my body fights everything that goes into my system. Um, I literally am on like 10 medications, which here recently I had to discontinue because they're trying to get all the medication out of my system now because where we're at now is like with all the medicine that they've had to keep going and changing and changing and changing and changing and changing, it has fucked up my insides to where like, none of the medicine that they're giving me is helping at all. You know, so it's, it's hard. You know, like, like I've been home since March because I've been dealing with my skin disease and it's like fluctuated. It's been up, it's been down. Like I had, you know, people who have like tried to do fundraisers for me. I've had friends who actually sent money and helped me and I'll be forever grateful, you know, but it's just hard, yo, because it's like 
with my insurance, it only covers half. So it's like I do my best to try to keep from going to the hospital because I want I don't want to deal with it, you know. But all in all, no matter how bad, no matter how worse it gets, you know, like I told my best friend, I'm gonna keep pushing. Because sitting at home and just laying on the couch and intaking medications, it's, that ain't the move for me. You know what I'm saying? That is not the move for me. Like, I got to be moving. And my thing is, you know, if it's my time, if, if it's going to come to my time, it's my time. You know, um, there's no cure for the skin disease that I have. And y'all can look it up. Go on. If y'all can't spell it, go on Google and type in what is HS. And y'all will see what I got going on. Um, so it, that, that's, that's something that has been very fundamental to my depression and my anxiety. Um, I'm not, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and be cool, but you know, since I've been here since March up until now, you know, there was three times I tried to kill myself because I didn't want to hurt no more. And that sucks. Like it, it, it sucks that my brain capacity and the hurt got so badly to where I was ready to leave my mom and my kids. And what sucked even more about it was when I was in this dark place, you know, the people who I thought was going to have my back are the people that turned away from me. Uh, people who would say that they were going to help me was like, yeah, I got you. I'm gonna help you. And when they came time for them to help me, blocked me, started a, 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 a private group chat, talk shit about me. You know, just just the worst. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, it's been really rough here recently. But I've gotten better with my mental. Like, my mental has gotten a lot better. I don't I don't wake up feeling like I'll be better off dead. You know, so that's a great thing. You know, there's still pain. Uh, like, the pain doesn't go away. You know what I mean? Just like I told you about, you know, today you was like, yo, do we need to cancel? Like, I'm sorry you just got out of the hospital. I was like, fuck that. No, we're going to do this interview. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, fuck it. Deep. Like, we're going to do this interview. I'm fucked up, but fuck it. <laughs> we're yeah, going to do this hey, interview. We care about your health too. So if you wasn't up to it, I'd have understood it because I know that sounds painful. It's but painful, I, but I'm really big on giving my word. You know what I'm saying? Your word is your everything. So if I give you my word that I'm gonna be here, I'm I'm gonna be here. You know what I'm saying? I'm word saying is bond. Like I, told you, I own this. So if we had to push it back until you felt well, I'd have been good. This is mine. <laughs> I own it. Who am I? Who gonna who gonna fire myself? Because I don't. Yeah. So <laughs> you're, okay. If Mr. McMahon voice, you fired. <laughs> but I want y'all to look at the link I dropped on uh, up there. That's Lala's uh pro wrestling tees uh, website. She got some t-shirts and merchandise that can help support her. We you know with you know money go to her medical bills and stuff. Also down, I have scrolling down at the bottom. It's coming. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's all a uh, Cash App, Vimo, PayPal. That's Eric. her name. So hey, just catch it when it come back around. I got he the said, ticket. He said, "Wait, hold on, wait." <laughs> you look right there, real quick. Right there, right there, right there, right there, and yeah. it's gone. That's all that because <laughs> you know, a little bit helps, man. Because uh, like I say, she's going through a lot, and she's a friend of the show. And you know, I like to put my people on. So you know, me and I, I, I appreciate have, it, I, man. I make sure my people eat. If you come on my show, I make sure y'all eat if you if you can, man. Like I said, y'all look really into that. It, yeah. I said, I'm gonna try to look into that and see if you might have a shirt. I might go get me a shirt. You know me, I love t-shirts, so I might. I go have, a yo, today. you gonna you gonna see a shirt that's gonna kill you on the inside, and you are gonna be like, I gotta get that shirt. Matter of fact, hey Charlotte, yeah. hand me that right there. The thing that says one hour tea. I might have to get that. I might have to get it. Here, I'm gonna show you what it looked like. Here, this is one of my shirts. And like this is the one that I actually went and I bought for my because I couldn't help it. Like I fucking love this shirt, but um <laughs> and right there it says for the motherfucking culture. Oh man, I'm getting that shirt. I'm getting it. And I'm Bam. buying one from girl too. We gonna we gonna rock it. Bam. There you go. Got me on the front. <laughs> we got a question for you, La La from uh, my boy Demond from Two Lane. Uh you want to know does race race play a big part going forward in the industry? Bruh, does race play a big part again? Bruh, bruh, <laughs> does it? Like, 
people have to understand, wrestling was already deemed as a white man's sport. A white man's sport. You feel what I'm saying? So, like, the fact, and, and, and like I said, there's a lot of promotions that are racist. You know what I'm saying? I'd have been, I'd have been in the, Charlotte, come put this up for me. Because your uncle going to kill me for fucking up his shirt. Here. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, man. Like, like, there's been a lot of promotions, dude, that where I've been at, and they've been like, oh, you know, if there's more than four black people on the show, you know, that's automatically a stable or a group. Or like, I've had people to try to be like, oh, well, you know, like I owned you. No, you don't. You don't own shit. You thinking these are the enslaved time? I'm gonna beat your ass like I'm cool to kids. <laughs> don't fuck with me, you know. And so, like, like race plays a big part in it. Um, now. They're starting to get better about it. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say all companies are racist because they're not. There's a lot that's. Yeah. You catching a, you catching a black person in that, in, on that roster, man, if they, if they are on there, they got to be Uncle Ruckus or Samuel L. Jackson off of Django. Oh, they butt like the new day. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, see, here's the thing about the. They cool, though. This is the one thing, and like you know, God rest his soul. You know, I I was I was blessed enough to sit down with Crime Time uh, when they were at Tennessee for an NGW show, and uh, Shad, you know, God rest his soul. You know, may he rest in peace. Uh, and JTG, they were like so dope. And we sat down and we had a conversation about this because I would always have this conversation with other people because they'd be like, man, like, like, I can't believe that crime time would just let Vince them do them like that. I can't believe our truth. I can't believe, you know, like New Day would let Vince and man do them like that. Like, man, this is fucked up. And I just tell people, this is what you have to understand. They gave these, these guys chicken shit. You know what I'm saying? They gave them these spots because they wanted to sit back and laugh and say, yeah, this is what black people are supposed to be doing. But what they didn't know is, is that these extraordinary beings was going to take what was given to them as a joke and make a fortune out of it. And that's exactly what they did. You know, and so that's the ultimate fuck you. You feel me? Like you yeah. gave me something to be racist and I and I didn't money, money. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, that was so my like, thing. Money, money. You know what I'm saying. So like, it, 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 it race shouldn't play a part. It shouldn't. Yeah, oh, but it does. For you, you gonna know do they have any black owned companies? Yes, yes. Said that. So you can check out AW, which is owned by Murder Uno. Um. Well, you gotta say it again. You was cut in and out when you said the name. Okay. Right. Can 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 you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, check out AWE Atlanta Wrestling Entertainment. You can check them out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Uh, the owner is Murder Uno Black. To post that out, shout out to AWE. Uh, you also have BCW in New York, which uh the owner is also black uh and his name is anthony cole shout out to anthony cole as well i'm trying to remember oh and you have a company in kansas it's called wwx it's owned by a black man name is flex reed um hmm, trying to see if i know any more nope that's the only three that i know for right now uh, we gonna definitely go out and support that then, because so BCW, uh, BCW, BCW, WWX, and AWE. Those are three black-owned businesses. Well, promotions that like I'm here for it. Like I'm totally yeah. here for it. I was really shocked that WWE put the two titles on Keith Lee because you know I swear I thought Adam Cole was gonna win. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like. Oh man, they ain't gonna get a brother for two times. They ain't gonna get a brother, a big brother at that, a big, a big right. brother like that. Nah, right. they ain't gonna get it. Right. Oh shit! Shot. Whoa! And then yeah, there's another promotion in in in. <laughs> I forgot. There's a promotion. <laughs> uh, DFW DFW All Pro. Uh, is ran by uh, Lou Lou Gotti. Uh, real name Lamont. 
Um, he runs that promotion. Um, he also runs VIP wrestling. So that's that's him. Man, I almost forgot. Shit. My bad, Lamont. <laughs> it I happens. It, it happens. And I'm also looking on the live. My cousin Ryan entered the chat talking about he's gonna give me even flow DDT. <laughs> And uh, he he enjoyed your talk. He said, you know, he was saying true that, and he was saying damn <laughs> to some of the stuff you were saying because this is running off of three different things. So you know, man, it sucks, bro. Like it 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 really sucks to go through the shit that I went through and to be treated how I was treated instead of somebody being like, yo, you know what? Let's do this now. Nah, it was just like, oh, well, you're just saying this because you're jealous and you don't want to work hard and da 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 and all this. And it's like, all right. All right, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna get the fuck out of Texas. And it took me a while, yeah. but I finally got out of Texas. And honestly, that was the best move I could have ever done. So shout out to uh, Ricardo Rodriguez, aka Jesus Rodriguez. Anybody who knows him, knowing that he used to be the uh, he used to be the announcer for Alberto Del Rio. Um, I was That's able. Boy, to, yeah. I, I was blessed and able. Uh, bro, he's here in Texas. Uh, I, was blessed, I was blessed and able to be on a lot of shows. Man, get him know. on the show so he can do my intro. And <laughs> I'll hit him up and see what's good. But, you know, like, <laughs> like, like, you know, we used to get there really early and we used to, like, work out um, at uh, Branded All Out Wrestling. Uh, we, we, we would get there and me and him would get in there and, like, a lot of other people would, too. And, like, we just work out, man. You know, and, like, this dude is so technical. Like, I am so blessed and appreciative to have learned stuff from him. And I've learned so much from so many wrestlers who's like up in the mainstreams right now. Like I'm overly blessed. So to learn the stuff that I was able to learn from him was great. And I remember I was just so discouraged and I hit him up like was at the show and I was like, what's wrong with me, dude? I was like, am I trash? Cause like being in Texas, like, yo, like, even though you feel like I was just a horrible wrestler, like I was just trash garbage. And he was like, no, he said, you just gotta get the fuck out of Texas. And sure enough, got the fuck out of Texas. First, 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 um, first place that I wrestled that I wanted to, like I always wanted to wrestle in Atlanta, Georgia, and I was able to wrestle in Atlanta, Georgia at AWE. You know, so being able, like, being, like stepping out of Texas, and one of my dream places that I wanted to work, I was able to work, and I still worked. You know, before all this retarded ass pandemic, is amazing. Yeah, cause that pandemic is hurting wrestling. Like I can tell, like it's hurting indie wrestling more than the than the big fish because you know you can't go, can't have all those people in the same place and all that. So I know that's hurting. Man, hurting. let me tell you, super hurting. Before we get out of here, we want to know if you got any more shout outs for the people. Any yes. shout outs? I have a whole bunch of shout outs. Uh. These are yeah, all the promotions. Yeah, These are all the promotions that have fucked with me the long way, and I 100 percent appreciate it. And like, I am overly joyed to be a part of y'all roster and to be able to be in the locker room with so many cool, amazing people. And that would be SWF Southern Wrestling Federation in Tullahoma, Tennessee. That would be One Two Seven Pro Wrestling in Grimsland, Tennessee. That would be GSWF, which is in. I don't know where it's at, but I'm sorry, Chelsea. Yeah. I can't remember. No, no, <laughs> uh, look it up. Uh, Pro South and in uh, Piedmont, Alabama. They've always showed me mad love, and I appreciate it. Uh, AWE, Atlanta Wrestling Entertainment in Georgia. Um, there's a couple of other promotions around Georgia that I've worked for that I can't remember right now. I apologize, but shout out to those people. Um, it is Queens of the Comeback in Charlotte, North Carolina. Uh, thank y'all for letting me come in and do what I do. Um, massively shout out to WSU and CZW. Uh, shout out to DJ Hyde. And that's another thing. Let me say this real quick, all right? Because I told him that I wasn't going to say nothing, but I'm going to say something. Um, leave DJ the fuck alone. DJ Hyde is, he may be an asshole, but he's an honest asshole. You feel what I'm saying? I would rather for somebody to be an honest asshole to me than to be a lying asshole. You feel what I'm saying? So if y'all can't yeah. deal with the fact that that man is just straight up honest, duck two, get the fuck out the business. No matter what, I'm going to ride or die with DJ Hyde and I'm going to ride or die with CZW and WSU because they ain't never done no wrong to me. You feel me? 
just wanted to get that out there. Uh, thank you to yeah, Anthony Cole no and everybody mm -hmm. at BCW. Um, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate you, Cuzzo. Um, shout out to WWX. <laughs> Pop -up party. Even though that doesn't run on the rail, but shout out to Pop Up Party. Shout out to my bro Ness and uh, the God of Drivers. Uh, shout out to him massively. Uh, oh, shout out to TWE. Thank you. Shout out to TWE. Uh, I love going there in Chattanooga, Tennessee. I love wrestling there. It's always a great time. Uh, I've made history before all this pandemic shit happened, and I went one on one with Brett Ison, uh, and I made history from being the first woman. And I'm gonna go ahead and you know pop my collar first. I in America to you know be in a main event let alone go after a title uh, a huge title in TWE uh, and for that I will forever be grateful and I will forever be appreciative um, there's a couple other promotions that I haven't worked at yet and I can't wait to work at yet and so I'm gonna give them a shout out shout out to SCI shout out to Sup Wrestling shout out to Battle Club Pro um, shout out to oh real quick Shout out to Jobber Tears podcast. I love these people. These are the dopest people ever. If y'all can, and y'all want to like really like be able to like talk with wrestlers, go on Facebook, add them on Jobber Tears podcast. Add them. Great people, Janelle, um, Sir Wilkins, and I'm forgetting the other person. I'm sorry. Don't shoot me. I think it's Mason. <laughs> I believe so. I'm not sure. If I said your name wrong, I'm sorry, but those people are amazing. Shout out to the NAAW, the National African American Wrestling Group. Shout out to Jabari McIntyre. Uh, he is the head of that uh, on Facebook. Uh, he support all, not that he don't support all wrestlers, but he support, mainly support all African American wrestlers, and they help support and get our stuff out there more. So I have to really uh, overly salute them because they have been by far amazing and uh, fundamental to a lot of my stuff getting out there. Um, shout out to Lala. Shout out to my sister Mika Villa who is by far one of the dopest commentators in the wrestling game and she ain't been given enough credit. So, you know what I'm saying? Make sure you know, massive shout out to Mika. Shout out to my bro Buns to get bundles uh, and my whole Dark Clouds um stable shout out to my people in eow uh shout out to you for having me come on here man i are 100 percent over appreciated shout out to aj who was one of the dopest wrestlers I've, I've ever met shout out to doug who's one of the other dopest wrestlers i ever met uh like i freaking love you guys uh you Kun jack thank you man for letting me come in to telehoma and be me and let me have fun shout out to tim and vicky driver i love y'all so much y'all have always believed in me and uh I overly appreciate it. Uh, to all the people, Amy and Ace Haven, I love y'all. Thank y'all for letting me come and do what I do. Um, last but not least, I have to no, 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 uh, I have to give a major shout out to my mom and my kids. Um, my mother for holding it down while I've been traveling and you know grinding to you know steadily take care of my family. Shout out to my son uh, who has really been my rock here throughout these very hard rough times shout out to my daughter whose birthday is july 20th she will be 13 years old thank god because that means only two more years and she can get a job sweet <laughs> um <laughs> but uh, uh well she is three days away from my girl birthday my girl birthday on the 23rd so they hey. <laughs> these all these july babies hey. shout out to my mother for being there for me and for having my back and always praying over me when I wasn't at home and even when I was at home. Um, shout out to James Hardy, Sandra. I love y'all so much. Last but not least, I have to give a maid. Wait, no, no, hold on, wait. I gave a shout out to AWE. Shout out to Uno for letting me come in and do what I do. Those my peoples. I love y'all. Mad love and respect. And last but not least, I have to give a major shout out to my best friend, my right hand man, my left hand man, my A1 since day one. Um, my best friend, my tag team partner, uh, and just all around great human being. I have to give a major shout out to Mike Cobb. Um, y'all make sure y'all go check out Mike Cobb. He gonna probably cuss me out for saying this, but y'all go check out Mike Cobb. Uh, he is the god of no limits. Uh, he has matches on YouTube, everything. There's actually a match of us beating the shit out of each other. Go check out Mike Cobb. Go check out Caden Say. These are two dudes who should honestly already have contracts. 
think I'm lying, go check them out. And I believe I'm done. I think you so. will. You gotta get them on the show then, because I'm just saying, you know, you could, you know, you in the wrestling world, man. You know, you I know, am. You know, Yo, you know, I'm gonna you know, start you know. adding a lot of people. So when you start seeing a lot of wrestlers getting added, oh, you're gonna be like, cool. who is this? Wait, who is this? Wait, who we, is we, this? We, we appreciate that. Y'all can head down. We can have a whole wrestling round table and y'all get y'all grievances out. All y'all grievances. Yo, issues that is out. So yeah. We'll have a blast. I, I'm just a, I'm just a medium. I'm just a medium. Oh, <laughs> and shout out to my to my sister. I love you. Uh baby D. Uh that was my first tag team partner. Uh I love her to death. Uh, she is a sweetheart, and uh, you stay your amazing self. And shout out to Terry, Terry, Terry. I love you, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Shout out to Mr. Steve, like dope ass fans, bro. Like, I have some dope fucking fans here lately, and like, I really appreciate all of y'all. If I can't get y'all names out, y'all please excuse me. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but just know I appreciate y'all, and I love y'all from the bottom of my heart. And thank y'all for being there for me. All right. So I don't want this to kick to kick us off and they only give us a two hour limit. <laughs> You're getting up to 130. But uh, I got you. Oh, you know, we good though, man. I know we want you to give you some rest too. Because I told you it's not your, your your only show. This ain't just a special. You know, she's invited anytime she wanna come. Well, <laughs> so, I appreciate it, man. Y'all, y'all gonna see a lot more uh Miss Rubens La La. Miss with that Larry do Miss knock a bitch head straight off her shoulders. <laughs> yeah. But I just want to give a shout out. Like I said earlier, I gave a shout out to my family and all y'all who watching. I appreciate. Oh wait, man! Every time I'm about to get off, somebody saying the question. They go with the mind. He said, "What's the next?" <laughs> you want to know what's the next event we can be looking for you at? The next event you can catch me at, you can catch me at SWF in Tullahoma, Tennessee, where I return not only back to Tennessee, but I return back to wrestling as well. And that would be August 1st in Tullahoma, Tennessee. So if there's anybody in Tennessee, Tullahoma, Tennessee, SWF, that is the place to be on that night. Somebody here getting knocked clean off, I bet you. <laughs> it's getting knocked off in the front row. I wish I was in Tennessee, I'd be there to catch it. <laughs> well, man, you know. Oh shit! And I did forget. Yeah. Shout out to Sunny Kiss. Um. Oh yeah, I heard uh, about, uh, about that is my. I love Sunny. You know what I'm saying? Sunny has done nothing but be an amazing person. You feel what I'm saying? So the breaking fact that you want to attack the, the right breaking barriers. So the fact that people want to tell Cody Rose that he's wrong for um. Uh, putting his title up against, you know what I'm saying, a gay man, you can go fuck yourself, bro. Like, 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 like legitimately. And I mean that. Like, like, I was trying to be cool when I saw it on Twitter, but I mean that. If you got a problem like with a gay man being a wrestler or like any of all this stuff, do me a favor. Kill yourself. Okay? Because like, Sonny is a great individual inside and outside that ring. And for Sonny to be attacked because of his sexuality, that's not cool. It's not cool at all. You feel what I'm saying? Right, so, nice. you know, I stand by Sonny. I love Sonny. You know, Sonny has been nothing but amazing to me, and I always have his back, and I want somebody to at me, because I'm going to fuck all of y'all up. I am not that person. I am with the shit today and forever. But that's yeah. a shout-out to Sonny, and shout-out to Awesome Kong. I love you, sis. Thank you for always being there for me and having my back. I appreciate you, and I believe I, I think I named everybody. <laughs> I'm just saying with the Sonic Kiss thing, man, you know, a lot of dudes got to check their masculinity at the door. And this is, this, this, he's amazing. He's an amazing athlete. Because I seen the guy that I first thought, I'm like, whoa, what is this? Because at first I thought it was a joke. You know how he showed on the Facebook thing, you know, it showed him his first video. I'm like, wait, this, this for real? And then I start looking more into his, to his uh, work. I'm like, man, he's an athlete. I'm like, dude, an athlete. Who cares if he gay? I'm like, man, look. Beautiful. Sonny is dad is dad, is that wrestler like I love Sonny. Truth. Man, all you can say is dude living in this truth. But you want him to be fake. You want him to walk around like he Hulk Hogan and stump and, <laughs> and do all. And that let stuff. me go and let me go and be the first. Well, I'm not the first to say it. People might get upset. I don't care. Fuck Hulk Hogan. Okay, fuck Hulk Hogan. He he can take his racist ass the fuck on somewhere and sit the fuck down. 
Fuck Hulk Hogan. You heard it. He you heard it here. I was a Macho Hulk Man fan anyway. I'm glad Macho kicked his ass. <laughs> but I gotta say, man, shout out to Sunday Kiss. I hope he win uh, TNT. What is it? TNT Championship. And no, 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 no. It's the AEW one. I know. I'm talking about the AEW TNT Championship. I think that's what that's it the is. Name of the I haven't watched it so long, man, because I've been dealing with yeah. my own shit. So, like, but that's the Cody sorry. Rhodes one. That's like yeah. the uh, Intercontinental Championship. Shout out to Cody Rhodes for standing his ground and for being the amazing individual that he is as well. You know what I'm saying? So, like, yo, mad, mad love and respect to Cody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, 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 I was able, like, and this might be on another show, but like, I was able to, um, I had my AEW tryout and I was able to get in the ring and work with Brandy and uh, Dustin Rhodes. And that was something that, dude, I almost cried because I have been a huge Gold Dust fan like all my life. You know what I'm saying? I used to look in the mirror and be like, so to get to be blessed enough to get in the ring and learn from him. And you know, to have him give me advice, it, it it was it was amazing. Like I would never forget that day. That was a day that I will forever remember for the rest of my life. So shout out to AWE, AEW, just AEW. period. You know what I mean? AEW. So <laughs> we get it, we get it. Man, players mess up from time to time too. I'm butch, I butchered the intro, so I can't get mad at you for messing up a day. <laughs> so, man, but like I said, till next time, man. You know. Shout out to y'all. Y'all keep keep watching. I'm going to come out with more content. Lala will be back. I'm going to try to try to get her to come every week because she's just so entertaining. Like, I, she makes my job so easy. Like, I barely, <laughs> have to talk. I barely have to talk. Like, other times I'm doing stuff, man, I got to be scrambling and looking at my stuff. I was able to do banners and put up questions and just talking and just flow freely. You know, I appreciate you, Lala, for coming on the show. Man, pleasure's all mine. Nice. You got stuff on your mind, or you want to promote something? You're welcome to come on the show anytime, man. Just hit me up. That's that's real. I definitely will, man. Love, nothing but love and respect. Uh, bye, wife. I love you. Make sure you <laughs> like okay, respectfully though. Man, don't y'all give, don't respect. give her, don't give her room. No more idea. Fuck it off. He be I know. As soon as I knock his head off. <laughs> No, uh, no, bitch. Ro, 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 don't listen to a row. Cause I know you wait for me as soon as I open this door. Fuck him up. <laughs> right when he opened that door, I spear his ass and then hit him with clothesline. <laughs> Respectfully, though, love y'all. Peace, yo. <laughs> All right, and like I said, until next time, this your boy Mo Young. I'll be back this week, probably with too nasty. Maybe La La might come. So uh, just stay tuned and like I said, keep sharing, keep watching. And, you know, we always ready for the smoke here, baby. Peace, y'all.